Welcome back to the second part of the lecture on geology, topography and climate of the Lesser Antilles. Uh, we've been talking about geology and topography of the Lesser Antilles and now we're going to get on to the climate. Readings for this particular part of the lecture are from the Encyclopedia of the Islands are uh, Climate on Islands, Hurricanes and Typhoons. Don't worry about subduction zones there. So, let's go. Okay, so first of all I want to introduce you to the general context of the Lesser Antillean climate, and that is a tropical context, as you know. Uh, that means that all the islands are within the tropical region of the Earth. So what does that mean? I know a lot of you would have taken geography and study climate in your lower school, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but just to generally give you an idea of what my concept of what the tropics are and how they are defined and what are some of the general properties, we'll go through them. Okay, so I want to take a look at um, the Caribbean within the tropics, okay, and some of the properties that that means. So things like temperatures being constant but rainfall being variable. Okay, so first of all, why are temperatures constant? Well, here is a map of the Caribbean. Uh, the Lesser Antilles extend from around 10 degrees north to 20 degrees north of the equator and the tropical zone is goes up to about 23 and a third degrees north of the equator so that's the tropic of cancer running through there so the lesser antilles are entirely within the tropical region now what does this mean in terms of temperature it means that the sun is never too far away from being above so that means that two things first of all it doesn't have very much atmosphere to penetrate through okay so when we're talking about uh, the atmosphere we're talking about a layer of air above the surface of the earth and it covers the earth like an envelope once the sun shines directly perpendicular to that envelope it has the minimum amount of distance to travel through it to hit the surface of the earth. In the higher latitudes outside the tropics, the sun is incident on the atmosphere at an angle. So it hits, it hits the surface of the atmosphere and has further to travel through the atmosphere to hit the surface of the earth. Why that is important is because as the sun's energy travels through the atmosphere, it gets absorbed, gets taken up by atmosphere molecules, and it heats up the atmosphere and creates things like high pressure systems, wind, and so on. But it takes away the energy that actually impacts on the surface of the Earth. Okay? So at the higher latitudes, less energy impacts on the surface of the Earth because more is taken up. At the tropics, more energy impacts on the surface of the Earth because there's a shorter distance for that energy to travel. Another reason why there tends to be less uh, energy at the higher latitudes compared to the lower latitudes is because um, the surface of the Earth is at the higher latitudes is at more of an angle incident to the sun's rays than say the tropics which are more uh, perpendicular. And what that means is that if you have a unit of energy traveling through space incident on a flat surface, you're going to get a pretty much a uniform and a fairly small area of energy on the surface of the Earth. If we incline that surface, however, and that same amount of energy comes through, it is actually spread over a wider area. So the per unit area of energy at an angle on the incline in the angled surface is less okay at the equator the earth is much more perpendicular to the rays of the sun at the poles the surface of the earth is much more inclined so the amount of energy incident on the surface of the earth 
at the higher latitudes it has to be shared over a greater distance so the amount of energy per unit area is less. These two reasons, the atmosphere reason and the inclination reason, means that the temperatures between the tropics tend to be warmer, uh, warm all year round. Okay, so temperature tends to be relatively warm and constant throughout the tropics. Another thing which I need to talk about is the need to talk about the uh, boundaries of the tropics. Why are the tropics bounded at 23 and a third degrees north and south of the equator? Sorry about that. Um, 23 and a third degrees north and south of the equator. What is the reason for this line? Why do we put the boundaries of the tropics there? Well, the short answer to that is that it's because those are the boundaries where the sun is directly overhead perpendicular to the surface of the earth at at least some point in the year. So the sun is directly overhead at the Tropic of Cancer during the summer equinox. Okay, During the spring and um, spring and autumn equinox the sun is directly overhead at the equator and during the northern winter equinox the sun is directly overhead at the Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere. Why is this important? It's because when the Sun is directly overhead it's giving, giving the maximum amount of energy to the surface of the Earth. Okay, And so those are the boundaries of the tropics. Once you get outside the tropics you start to get uh, cooler weather Okay, because the Sun during at least some part of the year is too far away to allow the uh, energy to uh, allow the energy to reach the um, the surface of the earth well okay what else do I need to talk about all right just generally two uh, Hadley cells and trade winds. Okay, so temperature is rel relatively constant throughout the tropics. Okay, so from the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer all the way through to the equator, temperatures don't vary that much. And we're talking mainly at sea level here. We're not talking about altitude. Things are different when you go up in altitude. Okay, but mainly at sea level, temperatures are constant throughout the tropics. Okay. Temperatures are also constant um, in time as well as space. So during the course of the year, the temperature does not change that very much at all. The temperature doesn't change during the year because the sun is never too far away. So there's always uh, enough energy. And this is important particularly for growth of plants because there's two main constraints for the growth of plants. First one is temperature and in particular when the temperature gets too low or too high. Uh, when the temperature gets too low then you will get freezing and physiological processes are stopped, growth is stopped. So plants really benefit when the temperature remains above freezing and it does that in the tropics at least at sea level. So temperatures are both stable uh, temporar uh, temporally and spatially. All right. Another factor, another factor of the climate in the tropics is the trade winds. Okay. Do I need to talk about the trade winds here? Yeah. Let's talk about the trade winds here. Now, the trade winds are the result of a circulation system called a Hadley cell. Okay. This is a basically a a rotation of air on the uh, on the globe in the atmosphere okay now it starts at the tropics at the equator or around the area where the Sun is directly overhead at that particular time that's where the maximum amount of energy is so the atmosphere is heated up the most okay because it's heated up the most it rises as it rises okay begins to cool. 
but meanwhile air underneath it has also been heated up so that rises as well. So the air which has risen previously needs to make way for that. Now it doesn't keep on rising out into space, that doesn't happen. Instead what it does, it moves upwards towards, at higher levels, it moves upwards towards the, uh, to the poles, polewood. And it actually moves that way until it begins to descend, because it's cool enough now, begins to des descend at the tropics, the Tropic of Capricorn and Tropic of Cancer. So it descends at these areas, and as it descends, it, it warms up and forms a high-pressure system. So you tend to get high-pressure systems around the tropics, uh, around the lines, the tropic lines, the Tropic of Capricorn and Cancer, and you would tend to get low-pressure systems around the equator. So when you've got an area of high pressure, area of low pressure, you tend to get movement of air between them, from the high pressure to the low pressure. And that's exactly what happens. And we perceive those... Yeah, sorry about that. So the winds blow from the high pressure systems to the low pressure systems. And we perceive that movement of air as winds. And those are the trade winds. But there is a twist to this. Trade winds tend to come from the east. Okay? In theory, they should blow directly from the, the high pressure system to the low pressure system. So what makes them come from the east? Well, the answer to that is the spinning of the globe. As the globe spins, okay, uh, it spins at different rates, at different latitudes. The speed of spin, so if you were standing directly on the top of the, um, the pole, you wouldn't be moving at all. You would just be spinning around, probably getting dizzy. But if you walked um, 100 miles uh, to the south, then you would be moving through space. You would be spinning, wouldn't you? So the difference in speed between the poles and 100 miles west would be you know, quite a bit. And so the, the same is between the subtropical highs and the equators, there is a difference of speed at the surface. So because of that, instead of blowing directly from the highs to the lows, the wind is actually deflected to the east to follow the spinning of the globe. And that is why we would tend to get the trade winds coming in from the east, or we would perceive the trade winds coming in from the east in our uh, in the tropics and in the lesser antilles okay now the trade winds are quite important because trade winds will dominate the climates particularly on the eastern sides of islands and on the eastern sides of continents as well they will reduce the fitness of vegetation on those eastern sides because they will constantly blow on them buffet them and so put them under greater water stress. But probably more important, they will often wind blast the vegetation, particularly at sea level, putting them under even more stress. So that the vegetation on islands tends to be very different on the eastern sides of islands compared to the western sides of islands. Okay. Trade winds also reduce the impact of a land heat sink creating ocean breezes. So what that means is that um, trade winds blowing across the islands will mean that an island or piece of land which tends to heat up faster than the surrounding ocean would tend to heat up and uh, the air would rise above the oceans and so pull in air from around okay, and create sea breezes. And this happens quite a lot on continents. But you don't really get sea breezes, um, you know, afternoon sea breezes coming from the ocean into the land um, on islands. You would tend to get the trade winds, but not these ocean breezes, okay? Not on islands, because the trade winds tend to blow away that rising warm air, okay? And that's just one uh, example of an oceanic impact, okay? Not a continental impact that islands have. Because these islands are surrounded by water, temperatures 
are very much modified, okay? Even more so uh, than on continents. So on continents, as you move away from the moderating influence of the ocean into the interior of the continent, you will get greater variation in temperatures, even at sea level, okay, during the course of the day. It gets colder at night, warmer during the day. But on islands, which are never too far away from the ocean, which is a huge heat sink and it basically stabilizes the temperature, island temperatures never really vary very much at all, even during the day. So, island temperatures are very, very stable. All right, just a couple of pictures to demonstrate what trade winds will do to the vegetation. This is the vegetation on the eastern side of an island. And this is the vegetation down on the strand line. The vegetation on the strand line will tend to be damaged by the salt spray, so it tends to be much more lower and more scrubby. Once the, de the um, vegetation gets above the salt spray zone, you would tend to get more taller vegetation, but it always has this smooth aerodynamic canopy. And the reason for this smooth aerodynamic can canopy is because any plant which sticks its canopy or sticks its um, crown above this uh, uniform canopy will tend to get buffeted and it will lose a lot of water and so on, and it basically dies. So you would need, all the plants would tend to grow more or less at the same level. And so all the plants would tend to shelter one another. But when you get uh, development along the coast, building a beach house or something like that, and you remove some of this ocean front vegetation, that can actually open up the whole thicket of vegetation and kill the whole lot off because they no longer have this vegetation at the front sheltering the rest of the vegetation at the back. So the trade winds have a big impact. On the east side of St. Lucia, the vegetation is very modified compared to on the west side of the island. Okay, rainfall. So there are two main factors in the growth of plants. First one is temperature, which we've talked about. The second one is rainfall. Now, you probably know that vegetation patterns throughout the Caribbean are very different uh, as you move throughout the Caribbean. So down in, say, Trinidad, which is not on the Lesser Antilles, but it's an example, you will tend to get rainforest at sea level. Okay, so places like Matura or Manzanilla, you would tend to get rainforest almost down at the beach. Okay, nice, tall, huge trees. But as you move further north, and you reach somewhere like Antigua, for instance, the type of vegetation that you get at sea level there is a thorn scrub, very low, dry vegetation, very thorny, and quite often deciduous during the dry season. It's a very different type of ecosystem. And when you go into places like Anguilla, which are even drier, you would just get cactus shrubs, okay? So why? is there this difference and the, the reason is as you probably guessed is rainfall rainfall uh, is different is distributed differently throughout the lesser antilles there are two main gradients that i want to talk about and the reasons for those the first main gradient is from the south to the north you get more rainfall in the south less rainfall in the north and the other gradient that I want to talk about is a smaller gradient, which tends to occur mainly on islands and also on the coasts of continents. And that gradient is from the east to the west. You will get more rainfall in the east and less rainfall the further you go west. Okay, so why do we get these gradients? So Trinidad, for instance, is wetter at sea level and it gets progressively drier as you move up to Lesser Antilles until you get to places like Antigua, Barbuda, which are very, very dry. All of this is at sea level. We'll talk more about um, the higher altitudes uh, later on where topography will interact with climate. Okay, and this is where the structure, the physical 
uh, shape of the island, whether it's a volcanic island, whether it's a low-lying limestone island, becomes important. Okay, so that gradient from the south to the north, what causes that? Okay, well let me give you a bit more of an idea of this um, gradient. Here I've got three rainfall uh, graphs, one for Port of Spain, one for St. Lucia, and one for the Bahamas. And I've drawn a line on the 100 meter, sorry, 100 millimeter um, rainfall level, okay, on each of the graphs. Notice the scale with the Bahamas is uh, different to the scale in St. Lucia and Port of Spain, so it's a little bit higher up in the graph. But the important thing is to count the number of months where the rainfall is less than 100 millimeters. Now, 100 millimeters is a more or less general amount of rainfall during the month, um, amount of monthly rainfall, which plants would need to grow. So once you get rainfall below about 100 millimeters during the month, then the plant is quite likely to stop growing, at least at some point during that month. Okay, so rainfall has to be above 100 millimeters for rain f uh, for plants to keep on growing. All right, so this is important, this lack of rainfall. In Port of Spain, we have one, two, three, four months of the year where rainfall is below 100 millimeters. In Seleucia, we have one, two, three, four, five months of the year uh, where rainfall is below 100 millimeters. In the Bahamas now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six months of the year where rainfall is below 100 millimeters. Port of Spain is at about 15 degrees, no, 11 degrees uh, north of the equator. St. Lucia is at about 15 degrees, and the Bahamas at about 25 degrees. So the further you go north, the greater the number of months uh, that vegetation cannot grow in. Okay, so the greater the seasonality of rainfall, the further north you go. Now, why is that? Why do we tend to have lower amounts of rainfall and more seasonality in that rainfall? The fewer months where the rainfall is adequate for plants to grow. Why is that? Well, the reason is the type of rainfall that we tend to get in the tropics. And as we said here, rainfall is mainly convectional. The wet season is when the sun is directly overhead. So that the, we get the wet season when we have the maximum amount of sun energy in the system. And the reason for that is because rainfall is mainly convectional and it relies on a lot of energy to evaporate water from the oceans, but also from vegetation as well in places like the Amazon Basin. And all that water is evaporated, and because it's hot, it rises up into the atmosphere. Okay, and that's what this diagram is showing. The sun shining down on the surface of uh, the ocean, heating up the water, the water turns to vapor, evaporates, and it rises and cools and then forms clouds. Okay? And these are the clouds that you'll tend to see, these big thunderheads. And underneath the, this area, once the uh, water vapor is cooled enough, it begins to condense. And once it's condensed enough, it becomes too heavy for the updraft to support and it falls. And that's where we get rainfall. Now this system is very efficient and we can get massive amounts of water being evaporated, tons and tons of water being evaporated through this method of convectional rain rainfall. The amount of energy which is needed is huge from the sun. So convectional rainfall generally only tends to happen when the sun is at a very high angle in the sky, which means that the maximum amount of energy is reaching the surface. We tend not to get convectional rainfall up in the higher latitudes. In England and in uh, North America, we wouldn't get convectional rainfall. But in the tropics, it is the main form 
of rainfall and it forms these huge intense thunderstorms okay but what it also means is that when the sun is far enough away you just don't get that convectional rainfall and because the sun is quite often in the southern hemisphere for at least half of the year during the winter time the energy just simply isn't there to produce that convectional rainfall uh, in large areas in the northern parts of the tropics and consequently you get a winter uh, winter drought you would get low amounts of rainfall okay so going back to our rainfall diagrams that is why we get this hole in the rainfall up in the Bahamas the Sun is too far away uh, for it to provide enough energy for convectional rainfall and so you don't don't get as much rainfall okay in Port of Spain which is closer to the equator it's also closer to where the Sun is uh, during the depths of winter so the amount of time which the Sun is not contributing enough energy for convectional rainfall is much reduced okay it's only four months instead of six months okay still four months of the year is, is quite high the minimum amount of months that you can have and still have a tropical rainforest evergreen tropical rainforest is about two to three months so Port of Spain actually does have a deciduous forest but in other parts of Trinidad you will tend to have uh, rainfall above 100 millimeters throughout the year and that would be places like Matura, Manzanilla and there you would have your tropical rainforest. Okay, This diagram shows uh, diagrammatically where the Sun is during the different months of the year okay what above which latitude so in January it tends to be above about 17 or mid January bit about uh, 17 degrees south of the uh, equator and as the year goes on uh, the Sun is about um, 17 to 20 degrees um, at about uh, June of the northern summer okay and it's during these times, as the cross hatching shows, these are the rainy seasons. So the rainy seasons basically follow where the sun is at its zenith. Okay? At the equator, and within about five degrees north and south of the equator, the sun is always at a high enough angle in the sky, whether it be in the northern hemisphere or in the southern hemisphere, it's always at a high enough angle to provoke convectional rainfall. So the, at the equator, rainfall tends to occur throughout the year. There is no seasonality. So there is always rainfall, so there is always enough rain for plant growth. So there's no surprise then, you, you would tend to get most of your tropical rainforests around the equator. Okay. So rainfall is different uh, throughout the tropics and it tends to create a patchwork of different vegetation types in the different places. Ooh. I was talking about the rainfall gradient from north to south. I haven't talked about the rainfall gradient from east to west. Um, let me do that quickly and then we'll go on to hurricanes. Um, the rainfall gradient which goes from east to west is mainly the result of the trade winds. Because the trade winds tend to blow from the east, they bring rainfall and that rainfall or moisture from over the ocean will tend to impact the eastern sides of islands and the eastern sides of continents as well. So therefore you would tend to get wetter ecosystems, rainforests, on the eastern sides of islands. Okay. So you would also get a rainfall gradient going from the east of an island to the west of an island. On the island of Trinidad for instance you would tend to get very much rainforest conditions at sea level. Just think of the Mora forest in Matura. But if you go on to the other side of the island, on the western side of the island, at sea level you would tend to get a dry forest. Okay? The main reason is because on the eastern side 
trade winds will bring moisture in during the dry season okay, and allow the vegetation to survive throughout the year without pausing at growth. So you would get a development of a tropical rainforest. And that east-west gradient is present pretty much throughout the Lesser Antilles and also on continents as well. You would tend to get a fringe of rainforest down the east side of a continent but if you penetrate too far in to the continent uh, in the tropics you would tend to get into drier conditions and you would get a dry forest or a savanna. Okay. All right, so those are the two rainfall gradients, and they tend to create different types of vegetation communities in different parts of the Lesser Antilles. All right, hurricanes are basically um, 